Section 20.4, Electromotive Force, or EMF. Okay, this is a little bit confusing to understand, but if I can give you some pictures, it may help you a little bit. We're going to look at the idea of spontaneity. Why will something happen automatically? So if you see a picture here of a waterfall, the water at the top of the falls will spontaneously fall to the bottom. The reason why is that the, the water at the top is at a higher energy level than the water at the bottom. It has a higher potential energy, and so it, will, it is less stable at the top than it is at the bottom. As soon as it's in the bottom, it is more stable, so water will naturally, in a gravity field, flow from, from uh, above the Earth's surface towards the Earth's surface. Okay, So you're going to have to make an analogy in your mind in terms of why an electron would come out of a metal and into another metal. There must be something about those two metals where electrons are more stable in one and less stable in another. So if the second metal is not around, the electron is fine being there, but if the metal touches another metal, the electrons naturally want to jump. They're more stable the second way, so it's naturally, sponta spontaneously going to happen. So if you were to make a battery out of two different metals, those metals, because they are different metals, are going to have a different um, capacity to hold on to those electrons. And if they are, are touched, say, by leading a wire from one to another, and you make a circuit out of them, you can change uh, you can send electrons through that wire simply because those two metals are different, okay? So electrons spontaneous flow in one way in a redox reaction. Remember, electrons go towards the one that's being reduced automatically, okay? So if electrons jump from, from one species to another, whatever it jumps to becomes reduced and its charge goes down. Whatever it jumps from is oxidized and its charge goes up. So why does it jump? That's the idea in this section. It jumps because of that there's somehow a less stable uh, metal that that electron is in and it's a connected temporarily to a more stable metal and the electron wants to jump and you're going to end up with an oxidized metal that's going to be eaten away and turned into a solution. The potential difference between these two, how likely they are to jump, okay, how much that they want to jump, the electrons jumping out of the metal into a, and making it turn into a solution, is called the EMF, or electromotive force. So electron is from elect, electro is from electron, mode of making it move. So there's a force that's pushing the electron through the wire, and that force is based upon how different these two metals are. It's also called the cell potential, and we're going to see that it's measured in volts. And that's why you would call a battery a voltaic cell, because it's, it's, it's running on the push uh, of those electrons through the wire, and that push is based upon the differences between the metals that you put in the solutions. Okay, so it's called a uh, voltaic cell because it's measured in volts. Now, a volt is a unit of energy. A joule is a unit of energy. So how much energy is being converted or moved per charge, unit of charge? And a coulomb is a unit of charge. So how much, uh, remember, you've got positives and negatives that's, uh, that's happening. You're moving electrons, so you're going to end up with positives and negatives as a result. So for every coulomb of charge, how much energy is being converted? Okay. If you can measure that, you've measured the difference between the two metals, and that difference is called the cell potential, and it's measured in volt. Okay, so you know that reduction is when you add an electron to something and make it more negative in charge. Okay, So if I were to have at the bottom of the list here um, lithium, I have a lithium ion, and I join an electron to it, and it becomes lithium metal. Okay. Or I have copper. Here's a copper ion. I had it's positive two, so I had two electrons to it and make make copper metal out of it. Or I have a silver ion and I add an electron to it and make a silver metal out of it. Or 
something a little weirder. I have a fluorine gas and I force two electrons on it and turn it into negative. So I'm all of these times I'm making them more and more and more negative. Well, if you were to rank them, you could rank them according to how much potential it requires to push them together. So since they're in a ranking, all of them have a different standard reduction potential. That means one is going to be easier to reduce than the other. Okay, so you could have something here that's very, very easy to reduce, like this lithium, okay, where it's going to release energy, release, you know, it, it's easy, negative 305, or something that's harder to, to shove electrons on, like this fluorine, okay, and it would um, require a positive voltage in order to do it. So what's going to happen is the lower down that you get, the easier it is to reduce it, okay? The easier it is to turn it into a negative, okay? To add an electron and make it more negative. The farther you go up, the easier it is, uh, the easier it is to oxidize it, okay? The easier it is to steal its electron, okay? So if this is negative two seven in one direction, then, then going backwards is gonna make it positive 2.7 and suddenly now, I can take any two of these on this list, put them together, and know whether the electron's going one way or the other. Now we need to know whether or not this is spontaneous. If I put the wire between these two metals and put the metals into solution, will electrons transfer or not? So sometimes it will transfer, other times it absolutely will not transfer. So it depends on the metals you choose and the order that you put them in. Okay, because remember, water doesn't just jump up a waterfall. There's water at the top and water at the bottom. That doesn't mean water is going to just go where you want it to go. It only goes where it's easier to fall. So it's essentially here too. You're going to determine. This is called the this is called the um, the um, cell uh, standard cell potential, um, which that's what the standard is. Just this little not thing so e naught of the cell potential is going to be whatever the reduction potential of the cathode is minus the reduction of the anode okay and so remember this is the reducing the chamber where it's being reduced where it's getting heavier and this is the chamber which being oxidized so you take the reduction chamber subtract the an the anode chamber and if it's a positive number it'll happen automatically if it's a negative number it'll never happen so this is our example in the um, anode ch uh, chamber, the copper here, the reduction or how much it takes to add electrons to it is negative 0.76 volts. For the reduction chamber, that's the, the uh, zinc chamber, in order to shove an electron on it, it would actually have to be point, or positive 0.34 volts. So to find the standard cell potential for the entire uh, voltaic cell, it's uh, e naught sub the e reduction of e naught cathode minus the reduction of e naught anode, which is negative or positive 34 volts minus a minus 0.76 volts, so it's going to equal positive 1.10 volts, and that positive voltage means that it's shoving electrons. So if I have a positive voltage. Imagine a tray of water, okay, like a large um, pan that you have water in. If you lift one side positively away from the earth, okay, so up into the air, but I just lift one side, the water that's above that side of the pan will rush immediately to the other side of the pan. So if you give it a positive voltage, if you give it a pressure, it's going to immediately run to the other side. It happens spontaneously. So if you can get a voltage that's positive, you're gonna get uh, electrons being able to travel through the wire. The last thing is how far away the metals are on that list of standard cell reduction will determine your voltage. So the farther they are away from each other, so let's say this is the one that's more easily oxidized and this side of the list was the more uh, easily reduced, Okay. If you can get them af uh, apart from each other, the farther apart they are, the, the 
uh, more push that you're going to have. So it would be like lifting the pan a tiny bit and letting the water slowly go down the pan or lifting it a lot and letting the water rush down from one side of the pan to another. It's that same idea. The, the difference between the two metals, if you can get them farther and farther away from each other, you can get more push, and that push is called voltage.